Welcome to De-Stress Your Business, the podcast where we show you how to get incredible results in your business without constant stress. I'm Alexis Kingsbury, a serial entrepreneur and founder at Air Manual, and I'm joined by my co-founder and co-host, Paddy Mann. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Alexis. So on today's episode, we're going to look at how to deal with issues. The one thing you can guarantee in business is that issues are going to come up and you're going to need to have a way of dealing with them so that they get reviewed in a timely manner so they don't derail your overall progress and what your team are trying to get done and so that the biggest issues that do come up get permanently fixed and don't reoccur. I guess if you don't have a way of handling the issues that will inevitably arise, you're really going to struggle to scale up a team. And all your efforts doing the things that we've been talking about in the last few episodes around delegation, you're going to struggle because you're going to put out new processes, but they're not going to get uh, fixed when the when the problems get pointed out. So you can bet you can bet that if you're not managing your issues, it's going to be a huge cause of stress. So today we're going to talk about what happens uh, when we work with teams that are missing good issue management. Uh, we're going to start actually by thinking about some of the symptoms that we often see, uh, Alexis. Yeah, so I think, um, and, and we can use both our experience in our own business when we didn't have good issue management, although I'm pleased to say we, it was one of the earlier things we put in uh, when we were establishing structure in our, in our businesses. but. Um, particularly, it's something that we see a lot when working uh, when working with others, uh, either as clients or indeed um, suppliers that we uh, that we work with. You know, even even in our personal lives, whether you're working with a convincing solicitor or whatever it is, and you and you have that bad experience. Because I think some of the, some of the things we start to see when you're not when businesses aren't managing issues. So one is firefighting. You know, lots of jumping around, just solving the next big thing, the next big question, the next big mistake. Um, Another problem that you get is uh, a lot of um, uh, distraction. You know, the team uh, constantly distracted by ad hoc calls, long emails, Slack threads, having to suddenly have a meeting about stuff, which is similar to the firefighting, except that it uh, quickly sort of envelops the rest of the entire team. And one of the other symptoms you can see is quite a lot of conflict and resentment where people feel like, there are issues, maybe even issues, issues that they've highlighted or that customers have highlighted and that feeling of um, other people aren't fixing them. So maybe it's a salesperson that identifies that the operations team hasn't delivered on some of the key promises that sales are making and they raise that as an issue, but it doesn't seem to get handled. No, uh, There's no way in which operations seem to deal with it. And as a result, they just keep on hearing the same thing. And um, that can lead to a lot of conflict and resentment between teams and between individuals. It can lead to a lot of uh, having to answer the same repeated questions, either from customers, like, you know, why has this not happened? Um, but also uh, for managers and leaders having to answer the same questions because maybe maybe there's something not clear in your training or maybe there's um, something that's a bit clunky about your sales process or whatever it is. And so you keep on getting the same questions from your sales team. So leaders, managers, employees all having to answer the same questions. Um, but then ultimately, you know, what does it lead to? Repeated mistakes, the uh, poor performance, the same, you know, the same bad stuff happening every day, that kind of groundhog day experience where your customers, your employees, you as a manager or leader are having to deal with the same sorts of problems all the time. And over time, that that really can erode um, a, a strong sense of culture and a, and a sense of enjoyment of what people do and and, fee uh, and feeling of growth and doing the right things for, for customers and for others. So I'd say those are some of the symptoms we've seen from others, but they're, they're ones that we have experienced in pockets at various points in our um, history as well. Is there anything that I've missed, Paddy, before we kind of explore how to tackle these sorts of things? No, I think those are some of the, the key ones. It's definitely... When I listen to other people, to my friends and my family, um, and they are sharing their experience at work, and it's often, you know, we're, we're, we're friends, we're taking that moment to offload, and it's often the things which niggle the most are the ones which they've experienced for a while and don't seem to be getting fixed. Uh, and so they'll, they'll share this kind of sense of exasperation that, 
Uh, perhaps it's a legal department are taking too long to review uh, documents or mm. um, that one of their colleagues is struggling to do sales demos uh, or whatever. There's something which is not working and it's not getting handled. And you kind of look at it and you go, oh, the natural thing, what you're meant to do in these situations, that social thing, you're having a glass of wine and you say, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I've got a similar experience. And everyone goes down the room and shares why they have crappy experiences at work. And I, I, I just always feel myself kind of having this kind of face palm and you just go, it's, it's just issue management. If you've got something that's causing you that much pain, that's mm -hmm. causing you emotional de-stress, which you're taking home with you and are causing you a lot of pain and, and slowing you down at work and everything else, then that issue should be raised mm. and permanently fixed. It should be taken to whoever can fix it and addressed. And at the very least, if it's not immediately uh, possible to fix it, it should be communicated what's going to happen in the longer term to address it so that everyone can calm down and, and work around it in the, in the short term. And it's a real weakness for a lot of companies. It's, um, I, 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 should, I say companies, it's, it's really something that has to happen within teams. So it's a real weakness for a lot mm. of teams. And I think one of the problems that you've got is that when we talk about, when me and you talk about issue management, that there's a side of capturing issues and, and doing it. But a big part of it is how you use your meetings. Yeah, because it's in the meetings that the issues need to be addressed. And in so many organizations, those meetings aren't being used as an opportunity to have those discussions to bring up the biggest things which are causing pain for the team. There's too much time, which is status update, or too much time, which is uh, the the team leader or the manager sharing their pain points around hitting goals, but not considering the wider the wider picture of of, of what's going on. Um, so yeah, and I've I've got a few steps written down of, of you know this is this is what we do every time when we're dealing with uh, issue management. Um, I guess step one is simply to capture the issue, and this needs to be as easy as possible. Um, we've tried a few different tools, and we used it. Uh, uh, a tool which is a bit like a, a support ticketing system, where you could raise a, a ticket. And it, you want to make sure that issue gets in front of the team that can handle it. So um, you can think about teams in terms of whichever groups of people meet up and have meetings, because at some point it needs to be resolved in a meeting. Each of those teams needs somewhere where you can pass over issues that they would need to discuss. And we've used a, a, like a ticketing system. We actually in Air Manual use simple documents. It's enough, just a document with a table in a really simple low tech way of letting people raise the pain points and um, and issues. And as I say, it's got to be as easy as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that I've had to coach team members on below me is don't try and solve the whole issue when you hand it over. Don't try and give me a two page summary of what the issue is and exactly how it needs to be fixed because doing that will stop you from actually raising the issue. It just needs enough context that in the meeting people will know what's come up and why. Yeah, no, I, I really like that. And that is so, it's something, I think it's a print, um, an idea that we took from uh, Ray uh, Dalio's book, Principles, where he's, uh, I think they described like a frustration button. And so we, we've coached our team around, um, you kind of need to treat raising an issue as the frustration button. It needs to be as, as quick and as simple as you experience that pain. So whatever it is, like, you know, you've got a candidate going through our hiring process who's got a pay, uh, a, a concern or a question uh, that you're kind of like, oh, that's a new one. We need to do something and say so you capture it there. Or, or maybe you've taken two hours to do something that you thought was going to take 10 minutes because of something that's buggy or whatever. Like, you need that frustration button. And so I think when we phrase it like that, I think that then people can can do, as you say, like get just get it captured quickly and then move on. Because often the answer isn't then to try and solve it in that moment. It's not the right time to redraw your hiring process or uh, and change your comms or to uh, try and instantly fix or, or rope in some developers to fix the bug. But it does need capturing so that it can be improved in the future. Otherwise, it, you will just keep on hitting that same thing over and over. So I completely agree for the, the need of having 
somewhere that's easy and quick to to capture those issues then what because for for a lot of people when they've then captured that issue or the teams they then think well okay but how do i get this fixed you know do i do i reach out to someone and say hey i've raised this issue do i um perhaps get someone on a call to try and deal with it uh i know the answer but tell <laughs> tell us uh what uh, uh what should people then be doing what should these teams be doing once they've captured the uh, the issue well i think as we've kind of alluded to <clears throat> what you don't want to do is yeah put that issue into Slack or into Teams or whatever you're using and then everyone jumps on it and you suddenly have this big discussion and you have a big email thread and it goes around the team and everyone's throwing it up and everyone's complaining why they can't get their their day-to-day jobs done and it's like guys you're, you're spending your whole time uh dealing with an issue which someone has put out there but in that moment you've decided it's a top priority thing it sits above yeah. everything else all your other goals of the day uh jump on this, this this problem don't do that in i, I would say 99 percent. i don't think that's uh i don't think that's off i think 99 percent uh is probably right 99 percent of times you can wait till the next meeting yeah. um and you you need to because it if you don't wait until the meeting there's no way for people to prioritize that against all the other issues that are coming up and all the other goals that they already have and are working against. Um, and in 99% of times it can wait. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's not that, uh, infrequent that simply waiting, um, does one of two things. It either gives you more evidence in that period to back up why it needs to be a priority, or you realize that actually it was something that just came up mm. once and it can wait and it can wait again until it comes up again. And, and sometimes, issues they, they get raised and they quite rightly don't get tackled uh, straight away so that next step it's it's wait just wait for the next team meeting then the third step on the team meeting you you want to i guess firstly have an agenda which makes sure there is time for issues now within our teams we will be having quarterly uh, meetings we'll be having weekly or bi-weekly meetings where we're setting the goals of the the, the week or two week period. And we're also uh, having either daily or uh, every other day meetings to keep on top of mm-hmm. uh, top of things. And I, um, what we always try to do is keep a big chunk of that time just for tackling issues. This is where your meetings go from being this kind of a, a boring update session where no one really feels the value of it or occasionally feels the value, but sometimes it isn't relevant to being incredibly valuable because everyone on the team knows that whatever the top issues are, they're going to make it to the top of the pile in the, in this slot that you have. So in quarterly and, uh, or weekly or biweekly meetings, we we're trying to get at least half of our time on issues. So if we've got an hour and a half biweekly, then we're spent spending 45 minutes on issues. And in our daily meetings, we actually go further than that. So we we only have a 15 minute, uh, uh, section. We want to get the entire status update to get everyone in sync within the first few minutes. Then we want at least 10 minutes just to tackle whatever's top of the day. And that means that we're able to look at things in a really timely manner. Now, when you're looking at issues within a meeting, uh, chances are, if if this is working well and, and you've, you've got your team uh, now getting used to the idea of raising issues in between meetings, then you're going to have a pile of issues. You're going to have some issues which have been raised recently. You're going to have some issues that have been there for a while. Um, and so what you're not going to be able to do is tackle them, them all. And this is, mm-hmm. this is where it works so beautifully is because you prioritize, you identify as a team before you look at any issue. And I, I repeatedly have to slap hands and say, back off, stop talking about it. We're going to prioritize first because it's really, really important. Yeah. Prioritize the top two or three issues. You don't need any more than that because you're probably not going to have time to to work through more than that in a, uh, in a meeting. Prioritize the top two or three and then work through them one by one. So take the very top issue, work through it, work out the resolution, who's going to own the next step which might be doing more investigation. It might be fixing a, uh, a problem. In some cases, the answer is to, to not do anything, just to communicate to the team why you're not doing anything. That's all okay. But the point is that you've, 
you've taken an action and you've moved it moved it forward and once you've done one if you've still got time left in your meeting you move on to the next one if you make it through all the top three that you've prioritized which won't happen that often then you can prioritize them more um and and that's it that's it so step one we make sure there's a way of capturing issues step two we wait for the next team meeting and step three on those meetings we make sure we've got enough time to talk about them and we prioritize the top two or three and then action them rinse and repeat yeah anything to add yeah i i love that and i think that um it's interesting because I, I, I think the fundamental principle of this perhaps is that you solve problems in the meeting and it's almost like many businesses you know from small to very large and we've both worked with uh, you know very large uh, organizations um it's almost like they do the exact opposite like the default for meetings tends to be the exact opposite in the meeting they are doing updates they are uh, often and the way that i've characterized it as slowly telling everyone things that could be more quickly written down and read and that are only appropriate to some people in the room. And yet everyone gets it slowly to everyone, right? And that's ridiculous. And yet, what do they then do? They identify the issues and they say, oh yeah, let's cover those outside the room. Let's let's take those offline, we'll pick those up, let's agree some actions. And then of course, what happens one week or one month later or whatever, when they have the next team meeting, they're reviewing the same actions. Oh yeah, we didn't get to that. Okay, well, let's make sure we don't next time. And so they don't continuously improve. And so I think that, you know, the, what we're describing here is it's flipping that completely on its head. Now, if I think about in our, in our businesses, like the updates we see in Slack, you know, if something's really significant, then we'll do an all company email, but generally it's going to be somewhere in a Slack channel. Maybe it's an insight based on a piece of marketing or a conversation with a customer that's in the related uh, customer insight or uh, marketing insight channel. Maybe it's an update that we've made to one of our software products. And as a result, that's in the product updates channel. And so as a result, you know, people, the relevant people are seeing that as they go along. Um, and therefore, you've got that time to, to focus on, on de dealing with the issues. So I absolutely love that. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's it's hard, though, I think, for leaders. And I think, you know, the way that we often describe it, sometimes people find that counterintuitive and very against what they have been doing before. And um, I think people find it particularly uncomfortable when they have to step in and stop discussions about issues that can wait. And I've seen it, you know, amongst really talented leadership teams where they get stuck into an issue, you know, it comes up and it's like, oh, yeah, let's and they start talking about it. And it takes a lot for there to be just one person in that room who goes, hang on, we're not on to the issues part of the meeting. We haven't prioritized this as a thing to discuss versus everything else. Therefore, and and they they're put in an odd position at that point because then it's kind of like, well if I weigh in I'm making the problem worse but if I just hold back then they're going to be considering this without my viewpoint and so the the culture or the the thing to put in place is encouraging people to to take that step and say should we drop this down as an issue you know should we should we pick this up in the issues and doing that is such a powerful thing. I always love it when, you know, there are occasions when I get stuck into an issue and another team member will say, should we drop this down as an issue? And I just sit back and go, oh, I love it. Like, love that you've done that. Because it's such a high leverage thing to do is refocusing the entire team's time on pr prioritizing the top. And it's possible that we then prioritize that as the top issue. Fine, then we've lost nothing. But sometimes that's, uh, or indeed often that's not the case. Um, but it does take a little while for everyone to kind of get used to this, I think. And um, and so it does take that discipline. You do have to uh, set the bar high. And when you see the issues aren't being tackled quickly enough, um, you know, tackle it in the meeting. But also, you know, if if the meeting itself isn't quite quite working, raise an issue and review it in, you know, review how the meeting itself should be done. I think too often um, I've seen examples of business uh, leaders, managers who say, oh, well, um, maybe uh, maybe we shouldn't have meetings or maybe we should reduce the frequency of meetings and length of meetings and so on. Um, and we'll go deeper on, on that topic because we fundamentally disagree with that uh, in one of our uh, next few episodes. But uh, that's, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a tough thing to put in place, but I think it's so so worthwhile, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I 
completely agree with that. It's, it's, it's really interesting. It's a, it's a really simple three steps. So at the summary level, we've got these three steps. It's capture the issue uh, and make sure that each team has a place where they can capture issues internally. And most of the issues um, should will normally be coming internally from the team, but others should be able to raise a, uh, an issue as well. So if uh, another team is having an issue with legal, team being slow at responding or are confused by uh, why finance are doing a certain step, then they should be able to raise that. And I say I, we use the term uh, issue, but it can also be an idea, an opportunity, a concern, mm -hmm. a, a risk. Uh, we say issues because uh, to say Catch issue, opportunity, one. idea, risk and concern management uh, yeah. is a bit of a mouthful, but it essentially means uh, any of those areas. So need, you need a way of capturing the issues. Um, you then need to make sure that people wait and stop trying to fix it uh, before meetings. So then just wait. And then step three, use those team meetings to prioritize. Uh, and then action. Uh, action the top few issues. And, and as I said before, rinse and repeat. So the, the steps are simple. Capture, wait, action on the team meeting. I think alongside that, the, the deeper the deeper challenge is just to you're changing a few behaviours which your team are going to be used to doing at the moment. They're not going to be used to capturing issues in a really light way necessarily. Yeah. They're not going to be used to waiting for meetings rather than starting up an email thread. They're not going to be used to um, telling people to wait until the issue section of a meeting before uh, before tackling it. Um, and they're not going to be used to tackling the issues in, in this way. So it's something to start ideally at your top level team mm. um, with yeah. your, your, you know, your exec team, if you're the business owner leader or the top team that you as a listener have access to and start introducing these be uh, behaviors, checking that they work and addressing the, the, the challenges that occur so that the people around you start to familiarize themselves with how it, how it works. Over yeah. time, it will start to get embedded in the in the culture. And I tell you what, with uh, uh, Alexis's example, where he's uh, he's going off, uh, you know, in, in a meeting, and uh, he's spotted something early on while we're doing a status update, and he starts jumping into that issue because it's a pain point. Uh, he loves it when uh, someone then stops him and uh, uh, says, "Alexis, let's uh, let's pick this up in the issues." He he loves that. But for the for the team, it's so empowering to uh, be able to take managers who can so often dominate the mm -hmm. meetings and have a have a button you can basically press and go, okay, let's make sure this is in the priority list because I'm not sure that the thing that you, Mr. Manager, thinks is very important at this moment in time, based on your emotional state and everything else, is more important than a couple of other things which are in the list. Love and that. that that is awesome. Yeah, no, I, I do love that. I want to pick up um, something as well, which is. Um, I think there's a risk that people listen to this, particularly when you're saying, you know, they, uh, that uh, employees won't be used to doing a lot of these practices. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the risk is someone listen to this go, oh, well, this sounds hard. You know, people, people aren't used to this and therefore putting this in sounds like it's going to be a lot of friction. But it, what it got me thinking about was, do you know what employees are used to? <laughs> they're, you, they're, most of them are used to issues not getting solved, nothing ever improving. Uh, wasting time in meetings, feeling like meetings are not valuable and uh, a complete distraction from their day to day, feeling like they're being uh, disrupted throughout the day, not just by meetings, but issues and firefighting and so on. And they, uh, what they're used to is their opinion being in of interest, but not really something that's able to be discussed properly or an idea or a, a frustration that they've got that can then get dealt with. So we have to be really careful not to tie what people are used to, to being the right answer that is easy. I think sometimes doing the hard thing, or at least uh, even if it's just for a short period, while people change what they're expecting and they uh, what they're used to, is ultimately the way uh, to, to success. So I uh, just wanted to pick that up because um, yeah, what people are generally used to is uh, completely intolerable. And therefore, <laughs> changing what people are used to is the aim of the game here. Cool. cool. So anything else to cover before we, uh, before we sign off? No, I think that's a, a great uh, intro to how to do issue, uh, issue management. We're going to be picking up more 
uh, about that in the coming episodes, uh, both about issues and, and meetings and so on. But I think that's a, a great starting point. Yeah, no, fantastic. And um, the uh, there's a webinar that I'll be doing on Wednesday, actually, if people are interested in going deeper, um, le- uh, less into issue management specifically, but about how do you um, stop repeated mistakes? How do you make sure that you've got continuous improvement in the business? And how do you therefore, so if you, you know, if you apply what we've described here and put issue management in place, how do you then turn that into changes in your processes and ways of working uh, so that you're not kind of repeating that groundhog day? Um, but also, how do you make it possible that the team manage that and that it's not just a business leader that has to champion and manage the whole thing day to day because that's not sustainable. So uh, I'm going to be doing that on Wednesday at one p.m. UK time um, and we're going to cover you know, that uh, those issues but also some other pieces around how to free up 15 hours a week of your time and how to uh, reduce stress of running the business without slowing down growth. Um, to find out more and to register just go to www.airmanual.co that's .co forward slash webinar that's airmanual.co forward slash webinar until next time have fun. Have fun.